Hey YouTube, this is Zach with the Keeley's Financial and we are back looking at a key part of the economy that I am very interested in at this point in time, which is infrastructure and in particular infrastructure stocks. The reason that I have such an interest in this right now is over the past few weeks we've seen a few key pieces of news that have come out that are not being picked up by the mainstream media. If that is the case, then I think that this is a real opportunity to add to your portfolio, whether we're looking at stocks or options for the chance to see a big return in the coming few weeks and months. Now, this is something that for those of you who have been around for a while, I have been talking about the infrastructure stocks at length. The reason for that is because over the course of the past few weeks, we've seen some key pieces of information that have been dropped for the broader financial sector concerning how can we get people back to work. Three weeks ago, the governor of New York, New York, Andrew Cuomo, had a meeting with President Trump asking the question of what can we do from an infrastructure bill perspective to help get New Yorkers back to work. You have to remember that President Trump grew up in New York. He does like the city, even though there is a lot of political games that are going on there. The Democratic Party unveiled a $500 billion bill two weeks ago that said we want to get people back to work and this was by and large a transit bill for infrastructure. So that happened two weeks ago. Judging from the, the pushback on the Republican side, it doesn't sound like they want to push that particular bill through because they have their own bill. So once they start fighting back and forth, I think that we are going to see a infrastructure bill come through particularly because we saw earlier this weekend, and I have not seen this on some of the major news outlets, but we had Larry Kudlow, one of the key economy advisors to Trump, came out and said that the president was interested in a $2 trillion package for supporting the economy that was going to be mainly made up of infrastructure targets, whether that is highway, interstate, transit so this is something that is again kind of being under the mainstream and we're not really hearing about it so all of that being said i want to highlight some of my picks for those stocks that we may be looking at the first of which which is brookfield infrastructure now this is by and large a very well diversified stock or really it is something that you can put your money in and not really look at it i want to highlight the five-year performance marries up very well to what we've seen from the S&P 500 and the in broader industry as a whole. Now, while a lot of tech stocks have seen a rapid climb over the course of the past five years, the reason that infrastructure stocks really didn't take off during 2018 is because of trade war news. So again, whether this was steel or other commodities, we didn't see the takeoff that we saw from a lot of other tech stocks during 2018, particularly the latter half, which is why you see that info here. However, they also were hit pretty hard, but these guys had a high of in the $55 to $60 range, and I think that this would provide us the capability to jump back to that point if we saw a huge influx from an infrastructure bill. So all that being said, what are some of the plays that we can look at here? Again, following the broader market is Brookfield. When I looked at their options chain, I didn't like what I saw just because of the volume. As you can see, they don't have a lot of volume for people wanting to try and trade these options. I don't know if that is because this is just not moving very often. We don't expect a $5 move, which again wouldn't be super surprising because if we look at the week, it still wasn't even at really $45. I wonder if it was, yeah, it never got quite to $45. So there's just no one interested in making that bet. I'll be interested to see what this looks like at the beginning of the week, though. However, in July, we do see a little bit higher of a volume, although there's just, or I lied, we do not have a high volume here. So I don't like the options play for Brookfield. I do actually like the stock here, although this is a $40 stock for a what if. I do think that there are better moves here, but this is a good long-term stock. You can see the dividend portfolio or the dividend yield here is over 5%. They have said that they are going to continue to pay their dividends, so that is safe at this point in time. So check them out. I really like them. And this is just a stock that, again, is a very broad piece of infrastructure that engages a lot of different areas. So it's going to be kind of a catch-all bucket. 
The next stock that I want to look at is going to be Nucor. And we have talked about Nucor on the channel before. Again, this is another stock that you're not going to see a lot of flair around it because it is simply a steel company and they do steel and steel products. So this is raw materials and this is a lot of the build it up. And over the past five years, we see a lot of similar expectations. So just did not grow during 2018 as much and they've been on a decline. They do have new management now. And I think that the best thing about this, even though we're not going to see that huge growth, is the dividend yield is once again still very, very strong. One of the reasons we haven't seen the growth during this time period is because of the China trade war and because of the animosity between the two countries. I mean, you're seeing some pretty wide swings here, but again, they are following the broader market at this point in time. So they do have a bit more options volatility here. And again, still what you're going to see with a lot of these is they just don't have as many options as some of the more actively traded portfolios. But as you can see, they do have more volume. They do have some movements here. And I like this option. I've got it on my watch list. So I'm going to continue to be checking this out if news continues to get a little bit higher or if it continues to show there's a higher probability. But Nucor is an interesting company and one that I do see a little bit more potential for an option spread as opposed to just buying and holding the stock, particularly at the same price point as Brookfield is. Last but not least, I do want to highlight my personal favorite that I've shown on the channel multiple, multiple times, and that is FTAI. And this is in particular the reason I really like this one is because it's based in New York City. And this is one that I think that we're going to see a lot of noise if we see something that is specific to New York City. I've done a lot of research on FTAI, and one of the big advantages is as people start getting back to work in terms of the airline industry, they're primed to be able to take advantage of that. So they lease aircraft as one of their ship as one of their lines of business. And there's a lot of airlines that would prefer to just lease their airlines as opposed to have to purchase and maintain their own fleet at this point in time. Again, pretty small company. The dividend yield, don't let this confuse you. Whenever we see these funds that have a super high dividend, this is something that they do as a result of how they're, they are supposed to pay their investors is based on profit. They have said that they are going to continue their dividend. However, they're not going to announce the price until I believe later this year, maybe October, I'd have to look at it. I just want to highlight that whenever you see something really over 8% that's suspect, that doesn't mean bad, you just need to know what the exact number and how they calculate that dividend is going to be. I have made a lot of money off FTAI. You've seen that here. We've gone over that a few times. So there's a lot of times where I've both held the shares as well as I have played the options game. And I really like the options here because this is a stock that can move. Now, I'm not gonna be looking at the June 19th. I like July, as I said in my last video, I've been looking at a lot of Julys. So this is one that I think that these $14, $15 plays are very, very good, particularly if the stock moves. Even the $16 one, I wouldn't buy because I think they're going to go to $16, even though that's not out of the question. However, you could flip the premium. So we've got a big week ahead of us, one that I don't really know what all is involved here. So I am going to be watching some of these stocks, seeing the moves. And before I leave, I do want to point out one stock that whenever we talk about infrastructure, this comes up is Caterpillar. Caterpillar is a behemoth. They are the giant of infrastructure and they are just a massive company. However, I personally am not going to be touching Caterpillar because they have a lot of exposure to Asia, a lot of exposure in particular to China. And if we were to ramp up the trade war, they could be hit hard even with a big infrastructure bill coming through. So they just announced that they have seen a huge decrease in sales, which is not necessarily a terrible thing for Caterpillar at this point in time. I do think they're a good company overall. It's just not one that I necessarily touch. So that's my opinion on Caterpillar, because whenever you hear something related to infrastructure stocks, you're going to hear Caterpillar as well. But that's just my perspective. So that to say, we've looked at three stocks I think you should buy. One, I think you should potentially stay away. I think that the infrastructure bill is going to come more and more to the front the closer and closer we get to the election. 
So I'm excited to see what happens there. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be good. If you found this content helpful, please drop a comment below on what you are looking at over the coming weeks and where you think you could see some profit, as well as leave a like and subscribe. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all next week or tomorrow. Thanks. Talk to you later.